Today we're going to be making these gorgeous little owl studs. If you've seen my fox studs, they are the same bead technique, uh, just a different pattern. Uh, be with me in a second, I'll get the pattern out. All right, here's the pattern. Uh, so we're going to be working the design again, the same as the fox design, this way. So across this way. So this is our first row, second row, third row, fourth row, so on and so forth. Um, so for the first row, again, same as the fox stitch, we're going to be doing ladder stitch and then brick stitch off ladder. Uh, so bear with me, I'll get all our materials. So just like the fox, um, we're using the Miyuki Delica, again, because they've got a nice even finish and they sit together really nicely. So they give you that really lovely brick pattern. Uh, with my beads, I do like to vary finish and texture, just so you get a bit of interest in the overall pattern. So let me show you the beads I'm using. Right, so tools you're going to need, obviously, a pair of scissors. I'm really zoomed up. <laughs> um, thread, I'm using Nymo, um, because I like this one. You could use Fireline as well. Um, because I'm using Nymo, I'm using some thread conditioner. I have my needle, and I'm using a big eye needle. So with a big eye needle, you can just prise open the middle and put your thread in that way. Um, it's quite a flexible needle as well. We're not going through these beads super a lot of time, and they actually do have a decent hole size, so you can thread through them a few times. Some other beads that have got smaller um, holes, it's nice to have something that's flexible to get through. I've got my thread, which you can't see because it's the same colour as the background. There we go. Um, so we're going to start working on the pattern. So the pattern, I need to pick up my first two beads. So I'm picking up the main body colour. Here are my first two. Put them on my needle. I'm going to just drop these close to the end of my thread, leaving a bit of a tail that I can sew in later on. So there they are. Right. Your bead and needle are coming out this way and your tail is down here and these are your two beads. We want to go back up through the bottom of that first bead. So here's our tail here. And we're just going back up through the bottom of just that one bead only. And I am holding on to my work. These are really small beads and everything tends to go flying. Right, let's pull those up. Get them situated good all right so they're kind of roughly sitting next to each other where are you going oh so the thread is coming out of the top of the first bead and i'm just going to give it a bit of a pull hopefully just sit these a bit better just so you can see right through the top of the first bead we added so now to get it situated to add our next bead what i'm going to do is go back through the top of that second bead holding my pinching my beadwork between my finger and thumb and now I'm set up to do my next one. So there's my two beads sitting side by side. And that is essentially ladder stitch. So I'm going to add another one. So my needle. So I'm coming at, So my thread is coming out the bottom of the second bead. I'm creating a little bit of a loop. So what I need to do is go back through the top of that second bead. Just like that. And then pinching on my work. And I'm slowly going to put that into place. Okay, so... There's our three beads, where um, our thread is coming out of the... Still got paint on my hand. I've been tidying up some artwork. Um, bottom of the second bead. So what we're going to do is to get ourselves set up for the next bead to add. We're going to go through the bottom, and this one's sitting a little bit wonky, of the third bead. Just get that in there. Bottom of the third bead. And that's going to pull our thread through to the top. Again, giving a pinch and giving a little bit of a pull, just so everything's sitting nicely. So there's our three beads. I need one more of that colour in this first row. There it is. So I'm coming out of the top of the third bead. I'm creating my little bit of a loop. So I want to go through the bottom and almost follow that thread up. And it's going to create a bit of a loop. Holding onto my beadwork so that it doesn't go AWOL. Um, I'm just pulling it a little bit. So our thread is coming out of the top of our third bead. So to get it set up for the next, uh, to add the next bead, we're going to go through the top of the fourth one. There we go. And... Now I've got this zoomed in so you can sort of see it really close up, hopefully, is the aim. This is the third time I've tried to make this video, having a bit of a fail this morning. Right, so we have four beads. Here's another fail. We have four beads sitting next to each other in ladder stitch. So I've got three more beads to add to this row, and I'm actually adding the wing part, which is a different colour. So here it is, my bead on the row. I'm coming out of the bottom. My thread's coming out of the bottom of the fourth bead. So what I'm doing is making my loop, and I'm going back through the top of that fourth bead and carefully pinching my work. Right, just to get you. So that's the kind of, so you can see that's the loop we're creating. And when you slowly pull it into place, it just starts to get this bead sitting next door to its neighbour. Cool. And then we will, coming out of the bottom of this one, so we're going to go back up through the bottom of that bead we just added there. And I'll try and show you that loop another time so you can see what I mean. Okay, so adding our next bead, we're coming out of the top of this bead here. We're going to go back through the bottom of that to create that loop. Let me just get it so my thread's not everywhere. Right. So we've created this bit of a loop, so there's our thread looping 
background as we carefully carefully pull it it starts to move it into place and obviously it's going to sit a bit wonky because we need to step back through it to sit it nicely um, so you can just give it a little bit of a pull or you can just take your needle in and just kind of sit it better and then give a bit of a pull right so again coming out the top of this one we're going to go back through the top of the one we just added that's to get our next bead set up okay so one last bead for this row so again same thing threads coming out of the bottom of this last bead we added so we're going to go back through the top oh, i didn't quite show you the loop this time yeah my thread's getting a bit ugly because i've attempted to do this a few times um and being lazy not getting new threads so i might just run the conditioner back through that again um so we're coming out the bottom of this bead here we're going to go back through the top of this bead here okay so just put the owl here so you can see we've done this first row so we've got three of our wing and three of our main color so our next row here we need one main color three wing two of the outer eye and two more main um so these step up as well so what we're going to do is an increase here and we're going to do an increase on the end as well right let me get this so i can show you so now we're moving on to the brick stitch part so as you can see between each row there is a thread bridge and the thread bridge is what we're going to be beading on from now on so what i'm going to do is i'm going to pick up my two beads so that's a main bead and a wing bead on my needle and then i'm going to go through the first under the first thread bridge which is this one here i'm going to just pinch my beads underneath now this is a bit loose generally because it's your sort of your second row so just go through really slowly and they all look a little bit wonky at the moment you can use your finger or your needle to kind of sit them where they should be i'm just gonna pinch it a little bit okay so it's roughly just sitting kind of loosely there so now what i need to do is and this is just hiding all the thread as we go along i'm going to go up through that second bead we added and get set up for our next bead so when we're increasing we're going to add two beads to the first thread bridge um when we're just when we're decreasing we just skip that first bridge i'll show you that when we get to it right so from now on i only need to add one bead and i know i have three of my wings to add so i've got one so i'm picking up one bead on my needle and i'm going to go through that next bridge which is this one here so just under it with my needle just under the thread going carefully and gently again i'm trying to do this on camera um okay and it's kind of sitting in place so i'm just gonna take my needle back up through that bead the bottom of the bead we just added holding pinching my work in my finger and my thumb just so that i can tighten that up uh if you use fire line for this obviously it doesn't quite um the thread doesn't go like this this is just a little bit messy because i've been mucking around with this thread for a little bit um okay next bead on my needle and here's our next bridge i'm trying to do this on camera which is difficult right so there it is through the bridge carefully pull through take your time go slow while you're learning this be uh, the stitch cool so now it's coming out of the under that bridge you can't really see it now but what we want to do is just take that needle back up through that bead and i'm pinching my work so that i can just give it a little tug into place um so i'm not too worried about these fibers sticking out because i'll tidy those up and when i finish my studs i do uv cure the back of it to hold the start a bit more secure so when you're pulling your earrings on and off it's the beadwork isn't flexible obviously with fire line you get a bit more of a rigid feel for the design i just don't have any fire line on me at the moment um and i like using nymo so again personal preference what you use uh, so next i need to add my eye outer eye beads so picking up one and going through that next bridge and attempting to do this also on camera Okay, my beads just going a little bit. Uh, my needle's gone a little bit a while there. I'll just pull that up. So it's just under that bridge. Let's see if I can show you. Just sitting under that bridge there. And then what I want to do is go back up that bead we just added. And your first few rows are going to look um, like everything's a bit wonky. Once you get onto third, fourth rows, everything's going to start sitting really nicely. So don't worry if it looks a little bit um, messy at the moment. It will tidy up. Also, as you learn to bead, your tension will get better as well. So adding another eye bead and then going through that next bridge. There it is there. Just try and do that slowly for you. Oh, we got a bit stuck there. Okay. 
Oh, that's so you can see it. Right, so there it is. We'll finish pulling it through. So it's just sitting under that thread bridge. And then we're going to go back up through that bead we just added to get ready for the next bead. Okay, I need to go and tidy up my thread. Right, I'm just flipping the design this way to hold just so that I've got more to pinch onto and hopefully that keeps it all there. Okay, so we are onto our last bridge but we have two beads to add. So we're going to add our main bead and we're going to go under that last bridge. I bet everything's bent out a little bit because this has got our tail on this end. And I'm just going to go back through the top of pull everything. Let's get that on camera. So you can see. Alright, so we've got one more bead to add. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back to almost like our ladder technique. So we add one bead and then I'm just going to go back. So we're coming out of the top of the speed last bead we added. I'm going to go through the bottom of that. Pulling it through. And you can get in my way. Yes, you are. Right, get out of it. I've got my tail caught up. So just be patient and sort of pull everything where it needs to go. Right, just shimmy this in. Okay, just kind of sticking up in the middle of nowhere at the moment. So the way I do it to get it sort of tidy, so I'm going to go back in through the speed. And then what I actually do is go down through the bead underneath it. Um, now to get it situated for the next row, I'm going to go, so we're coming out the bottom of this one, I'm going to go back up through this one, and up through this one, so the third one on the second row. This is just so my needle is facing the right way. I'm just going to go down through this one here, next door, and then back up through that last one we added. And now I'm set up to do the next row. And now everything hopefully is going to be a little bit easier. So, okay, so we've got this row and this row. And now I'm going to do this row. So in this one I have two main and outer eye and inner eye and outer eye, two wing and then two main. So again, I'm going to be increasing one, two outer on my needle. And I'm going to go through that first thread bridge or under, under the bridge. Just going to pull it all through really slowly. Okay, everything's going to sit wonky on this first one. Um, you can you can get it to sit by using a needle. I'm not going to bother with that. I'm just going to put my needle up through the second bead we added. And carefully pull it through. Oh, get in there. Give it a bit of a tug. Cool. So now they're both sitting the way they should. And so just getting understanding your tension is also important. Right, so now I need to add an outer eye, and so now from now on I'm only adding one bead per bridge, going under that next bridge that you can see there, pulling gently, and then back up through the bottom. Holding, pinching my beadwork and just giving everything a little bit of a pull. Right now I need to add that eye. Right, next bridge. There I am going under it. Oh, yeah, under it. Um, pulling, and then going back up through the bead that we just added. Pinching my work and then giving a little bit of a tension tug. Just gently, don't give it a good hard tug because you just break the thread. Okay, next bead is an outer eye. I'm gonna go through that bridge and see how much easier now that we've got a little bit of beads on there and how much more stable your work is. So you'll be able to build up that design a little bit faster. Pulling through. Okay, now I had to have two wing. So adding one at a time, going through the next bridge. Through, and then back up through the bottom of that bead that we just added. Thread bridge underneath, pop, and then and now you start to see everything kind of sits nice and neatly. And I think I said I had two main ones to add. So adding one at a time, this is our last bridge, so we're going to have to add one without a bridge. So pop that in there under the bridge, pulling carefully, carefully, pop, back up through that bead, oh, wasn't holding my work and it went AWOL, 
Okay, one more bead for this row. Which is the main one. Okay, so we've got no more bridges. So like the last time, what we're going to do is we're coming out the top of this bead. We're going to go through the bottom and create our loop again. So let me just see if I can get it almost there. Okay, there's our loop. Keep pulling slowly. And pop it in place. And then I'm going to get situated again to my next row. So I'm going to go back through that bead we just added on. The bead directly under it in the row before. Oh, my little friend attached. Right, I'm going to go up through the next door neighbor of the bead we're just coming out of the bottom of. And you can do this one on time, so let's just do that once. Out that one, I've got my tail cord again, so I'm just going to take a minute to just pop that back out of the way. See if I can show you where I am. Right, so I'm coming out of the top of the speed here. I'm going to go through the bottom of the third bead in that row. And now I'm going to get it set up to add my next row. So through its next door neighbor, down, and back up through beadwork on table. So we're coming out the bottom, so we're going to go through the bottom of this last bead we added and up the top. Okay, let's have a look at our next row. Is our next row also an increase? Yes, it is. So we're going to go onto the feet. We're going to do this row here. So it's an increase here, but actually when we come to the top, it's an increase. So I'm just going to go ahead. I'll get the first row, uh, sorry, the first two beads to show you, and then I will go off camera and get it to where we need to do the next part. Because you can, you now should be able to go through each bridge. So first one, because it's an increase, we're going through and adding our first two beads so that's a foot bead and a main body bead and we're going through that first bridge now be careful it's a bit looser this bridge because it's sitting at the end holding on to your work which doesn't want to okay gentle 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 through get your tail out of the way again it's kind of sitting a wonky donkey here that's fine i'm just going to go back through that second bead we added pinching it in my hands and just falls into place okay i know i have one more main bead so, this is, so we're going to continue on now for the rest of this row um with just one bead and going under each uh thread bridge between those beads so oh tail in the way again and i've got a lovely knot in there that i'm just gonna have to work out okay sorry um and back up through that bead so carry on with your pattern for the rest of that row until you get to those last couple of beads all right, so I've got just a couple more beads to add to this row. Um, I only have two main beads to add. So and I have two thread bridge bridges left, so that works out perfectly. So going through underneath the bridge, pulling gentle, 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 and then popping my needle back up through the inside of that bead we just added on. And last one, same thing, under the last bridge, gentle pull stacks up nicely and going back up through that middle of that bead we just added right let's get our little pattern back so we've done these rows here okay look we've got a decrease and a decrease here so to do the decrease it's nice and easy instead of so i still take two beads instead of going through the first bridge i skip the first bridge and i take my needle through the second bridge under the second bridge yeah, why are you not focusing there we go gentle pull now this one you will have to just go through them a couple of times to get them in place so up through that one second one we added it's kind of still sitting a bit wonky so what i do is i go back through attempt to sorry i'm trying to do this on camera through the first bead that we added and then back up through the bottom of that second bead we added and that's just gonna oh and we lost our thread off the needle again let me just pull that through Boom. and that's just gonna set everything nicely again and get you set up for the row Okay, now you've got that first um, decrease done. All you have to do to carry on with the decrease is just do your pattern through every remaining bridge. So I'll get to the, I'll do these lot and then come back to you on the last two. Okay, I have two more bridges left. And the last two beads I need for my pattern are the main beads, which I didn't even get one on the needle there. Go cool. one under that bridge. Pull through slowly. And then take my needle in through the center of that bead we just added and last one through the last bridge slowly and then back up through the center of that giving everything a little tug not too tightly so we don't break our thread okay now we've got the first half of the owl done so we're actually repeating all these steps but in reverse so we're actually doing this row on the other side 
So we've got an increase. So we know on an increase we need to pick up two beads. So we've got our main, sorry, our foot and then our main foot, foot first and then our main one, like that on the bead, on the needle. And we're going to go through that first bridge carefully. Lovely. Now you can work your design all the way up and we're also finishing on an increase. So let me get to there and then we'll do that increase another time. Okay, so we've got our last bridge, but we need to add two more beads. So one, pick up one bead. Go under the last bridge. Gently pulling it through. Back up through the center of the bead. And just like the other increases, we're coming out of the top of this last bead, the bead we just added. We're going to go through the bottom of it to create our little loop. Let me just get it almost there. There's our little loop. Pull it. And now we're going to do our technique just to get everything in place. So back down that last the one we just added. And the last one from the row before. Up through its neighbor. Here. Again, we're just playing hide the thread in between the beads. So getting this lovely sort of brick effect. Um, so we're coming out the top of this bead here. We want to go through the speed which is the third in the last row we just did or third to last down through its neighbor and back up to do our next row now i'm hoping you can carry on um so we're doing this row here next okay so we've got an increase here and a decrease here cool so go ahead and carry on and finish your pattern um, so what I wanted to talk to you while I'm just working this through is hopefully you can see now why I use different finishes. Um, so I've got a nicer contrast in this one, um, but you can see these are matte finish and then I've got some sort of shiny ones and these are sort of almost two-toned so they kind of change with a, you can see the gold reflect if I pull them around. Uh, just adds interest to your beadwork. So that's how I like, why I like to use different sheet needles rather than everything sitting at the same. Cool. So you should be able to go on and carry on that all the way to the end and I'll, um, what I'll do is get it to the end and then come back and we'll sew everything up. Right, last row. Just went away and completed the other rows. There's a decrease, so I'm skipping that first bridge and going through the second. And I'm just going to stabilize those beads by going through them a few times. One bead now. Oops. On the bead. So hopefully you've been able to see well enough on this um, to understand the stitch. You could, um, if you didn't want to start with a pattern, just start learning the stitch and following those techniques. Uh, sorry, I don't have the best quality video. I'm just using a phone camera and a stand. So I'm just trying to get the best detail I can without all the equipment. Just so you can see. Uh, Google Brick Stitch or YouTube search, sorry. Um, Brick Stitch and you'll um, see some other amazing artists probably explain it better than I do. Uh, this is basically how I learned as well, was just watching videos. Oh, last one doesn't want to go through that bridge. And there's our little owl, all finished. And um, so what I like to do is just go through and sort of, because I use a resin to cure the back, I'm not too worried about the threads coming loose because everything's going to be nice and rigid in the end. So I'll go through and uh, weave my thread in and out of these beads a few times. When you're attaching your back, what you could do is just use a bit of super glue over the entire back, then put your stud on with super glue, and that should make you a little bit more rigid if you don't want to go to the extent of getting UV cure resin. So you're just going in and out. Oh, I've lost my thread, but basically you'd weave it in and out of all of these a few times and come back out here and trim your thread. And then we've got this gorgeous little owl with colours. Um, so this other one, let me show you some of the. So we've got the wings on this one. So I'm going to show it S, see they colour change. And then the main body on this one is actually transparent. And then you've got opaque here. And again, the eyes have a bit of a sort of reflectiveness as well, which adds to the fact that owls do have a glow in the dark eyes. So yeah, hopefully you found this helpful. And hopefully you've been able to create a little bit of brick stitch design. Thank you for watching.